This is the OTB Network. Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Horses and Courses brought to you by Parting Glass Racing. I'm Jean Wood. We've got a lot of good racing for you. We've got some terrific sprint action coming in the middle of the program, but we'll start things out with three-year-olds in action at Monmouth Park on Saturday afternoon, a mile in the 16th, the $200,000 Grade 3 Pegasus. They're racing in the Pegasus. Jackson Bend came out well. Schoolyard Dreams on the inside and on the outside of Fleet Express. A Fleet again is away running in fourth and Soaring Empire and Nacho Friend is the trailer in the race to the first turn where Schoolyard Dreams and Jackson Bend lead the way. It's Jackson Bend on the outside. Schoolyard Dreams along the rail. These two battling it out early and a Fleet Express two off of them. A Fleet again follows in fourth outside of a Fleet Express. Nacho Friend is at the rail in fifth and edging up close as the pace really slows down. The trailer soaring Empire is only three lengths behind. The first quarter was 24 and four. Down the back stretch, Jackson Bend the leader by a head. Inside, it's Schoolyard Dreams. A Fleet Express alongside of them. A Fleet again is just off the leaders. Soaring Empire and Nacho Friend are not far behind either. Still about two and a half lengths separate the entire field through a 49 and one half mile. Schoolyard Dreams on the inside. Jackson Bend is right alongside as they go into the far turn. They are nose to nose on the lead and Jackson Bend pokes a neck in front. Now a Fleet Express comes to take him on. A Fleet Express on the outside. Jackson Bend is under a ride. Schoolyard dreams too. Soaring Empire circles up on the outside of a Fleet again. And Nacho Friends in it too. As they come to the top of the stretch, it's a Fleet Express. Soaring Empire, a fleet again between horses. Nacho Friend is in fourth, past the eighth pole. A fleet express with the rail in the lead. A fleet again is coming. Soaring Empire third, a fleet express, and a fleet again one two. And a fleet express has won the Pegasus. A fleet again was second. Soaring Empire was third, then Nacho Friend. A Fleet Express puts himself into the graded stakes picture this year in a wide open three year old season with a length and three quarter length victory over a Fleet again with Soaring Empire back in third with a rallying move. A Fleet Express coming in off a very impressive Belmont allowance race win by about seven lengths over older horses is now three for five as he scores over the third place finisher from the spend a buck the Withers winner a Fleet again. The winner a Fleet Express is a dark bay or brown son of a fleet alex from expanse by distant view bred in kentucky by mcmillan brothers and james devaney owned by gainsway farm and martin cherry trained by james jimmy jerkins and ridden to victory by javier castellano a fleet express covers the mile in the 16th in 145.44 We'll head right back to Monmouth Park on Sunday. The co-featured Anderson Fowler, $100,000 for three-year-old sprinting on grass. They're racing in the Anderson Fowler. And it is in the ocean on the inside, out quickly for the lead. In the ocean, immediately takes charge. Never Content is out running in second. And then to the outside, Drover is third. Cooper Jr. is fourth and racing four lengths off the lead in the early stages. On the far outside, Escrow Kid is next. In between horses, Bernie the Maestro. And in the back of the field are Flamin' Hot. And close to the edge is the trailer. The first quarter was 21 and four fifth seconds. And they're moving into the far turn. In the ocean and Drover are right together. In the ocean on the inside. Drove her alongside second, break of two and a half, and never content is third and edging up now to the front runners. Escrow Kid follows in fourth, Bernie the Maestro's under a ride fifth, Cooper Jr. and Flamin' Hot, and they're into the stretch. In the ocean, drove her up alongside. Here's never content, splitting horses, Escrow Kid. Bernie the Maestro is there, Cooper Jr., Flamin' Hot finishing with a rush on the outside. Escrow Kid, here's Flamin' Hot on the outside, and Cooper Jr., Escrow Kid and Flamin' Hot. 
Escrow Kid and Flamin' Hot together on the wire. Then Cooper Jr. in close to the edge. Flamin' Hot picks up the victory on the DQ of Escrow Kid, who ducked out at about the 16th pole. It was a close finish, and Escrow Kid, because he caused a bit of a chain reaction, ended up being disqualified and placed fifth with Flamin' Hot getting the victory. A nice off-the-pace rallying move is the even money favorite and uh, obviously being interfered with late in the going. Cooper Jr. moved up to second with close to the edge third. The winner, Flamin' Hot, coming in off a good second in the Tom Ridge at Presque Isle on the 6th of June, is now four for eight lifetime. He is a Dark Bay of Brown gelded son of flamethrower from domestic dispersal by Scatman Dew. Bred in Florida by Gary Garber and owned by Ralph Emmett Evans. Trained by Rick Violet and ridden to victory by Alan Garcia, Flamin' Hot covers the five and a half in 102.31. We will head to Delaware Park now. We're on Saturday. It was Older Horses in Action in the John Rooney Memorial. My main star acting up just a bit, and they're off in the John Rooney Memorial. It's a pretty good start for the mall parade, but between horses, sales tax, trends up on the far outside. Vie for the top spot as they come off the chute and down toward the inside, it's Anima. Not really a taxing tempo so far. Anima leads it. By about a length, still well in hand. Trent's are racing second up on the outside. Ace, she's adorable. Down on the inside, it's Blue Diamond Alley racing in fourth. Up on the outside, it's the Galem Girl toward the inside. Sales tax followed by Pareba. My main star will have to come from the back as they make their way around the bend. It's Anima showing the way. Opening quarter goes in 25-2. and two. That's a very controlled pace being set by Anima. Up on the outside, Trenza racing second. Blue Diamond Alley has the rail in third. Right alongside A, she's adorable. Sales tax tucked in nightly in fifth. Up on the outside, the Galen Girl, followed by Pareba and My Main Star. They continue that leisurely pace down the back stretch. They've got five furlongs to go, and the opening half goes in 50 and 1. And on the front end is still Anima, leading it by length over Trenza. Blue Diamond Alley has the rail. A, she's adorable, is right there, followed by sales tax. The Galen Girl's going to make a three-wide move down the back stretch. Then a length and a half further back to Pareba and My Main Star, but only about six lengths separates this field as they race into the turn. On the front end, still Anima fending off Trenza and A, she's adorable. Two lengths, the Galen Girl's under a drive right now, has her work cut out. Dropping back toward the inside, Blue Diamond Alley. Pareba's trying to mount a rally. They've got a quarter to go, and Anima now... Challenged by Trenza for that lead, and Trenza's running a big one off the left. Trenza leads it by a length. Anima racing second. Up on the outside, A, she's adorable, followed by the Galem Girl and Pareba. It's Trenza. Anima's battling back on the inside. Up on the outside, A, she's adorable. A, she's adorable. Trenza, Anima toward the inside. A, she's adorable, edging away. She'll win the Rooney Memorial by a length and a half. Anima a game second, followed by Trenza and Pareba. A, she's adorable, getting the victory here on top by a length and three quarters. A nice trip from just off the pace. She scores over Mountaineer shipper Anima, who showed the way in the early going at a big, at a big price, 18 to 1, to settle for second. Trenza tracks the pace early and settles for third. A, she's adorable, now four for ten lifetime, was second in a good allowance at Arlington Park last time out to stakes winner Roma Kaga. Here she picks up the credentials, the stakes credentials herself. She is a dark bayer brown filly, a daughter of Joe Har from She's Scrumpy by Squadron Leader, bred in Kentucky by Philip a. S. Moss and owned by the breeder, trained by Michael Stidham and ridden to victory by Anna Napravnik. A, she's adorable, covers the mile and the 16th on the turf in 143.56. We'll head now to Colonial Downs for a trio of stakes races on Saturday afternoon, kicking things off the $50,000 Buckland, going short on the grass. And they're off. If not for Lost in Suzanne out first for the lead, don't get suspicious, got that speed outside and Libor Ladies right into it too. So Libor Lady and Dance with Class are coming head to head for the lead, joined by Don't Get Suspicious out three wide. Three of them right across the track. Suzanna races in the fourth spot, followed by Lady Rizzi who's in fifth, twice as beautiful as next in sixth, if not for Lost in seventh. Tripped is racing in eighth, it's another two to Bopoline. What she said and Cosmo's Buddy into the far turn run. Skirmish up front here, Dance with Class is going at with Don't Get Suspicious, Libor 
Aurora Lady is tracking now taken three wide and Susanna the Red Colors is in fourth. Lady Rizzi is in fifth and twice as beautiful splitting horses from six angled off the inside for the top of the stretch run. They face that quarter pole and turn in for home. Don't get suspicious. Libor Lady there on the outside. Susanna toward the center of the course is in third. Followed between horses by Lady Rizzi's trying to kick it in. If not for Lust running a big one on the far outside and in between horses Lady Rizzi and Alan Garcia head in front and it's going to be a photo that goes to Lady Rizzi. If not for Lost and Libor Lady and Cosmo's Buddy and Bopoline close to that spot. Lady Rizzi picks up the win. A familiar face to the New York handicappers. A nice effort in a return race two races back. Last time out a close up fourth in the very one stakes at Pimlico on Black Eyed Susan Day. Here gets the victory by a game head over, if not for lust, with Libor Lady, the favorite in the field, an old-timer and a horse that has been around in the uh, turf sprint game for quite some time, settling for third. Lady Rizzi is a bay mare, a daughter of Rizzi, from What's All the Ruckus by Bold Ruckus, bred here in New York by Says Who Thoroughbreds and owned by Benchmark Racing Stable, trained by Linda Rice and ridden a victory by Alan Garcia, Lady Rizzi. Covers the five and a half on the turf at Colonial in 102.81. We'll continue at Colonial Downs, Phillies and Mares in the grade three all along. And they're off right away in the all along. Tizaquina immediately out to the early advantage from Shared Account, who moves in between the second. Dinosaur going to be taken back. Here's the Chilean Philly. Casablanca Smile showing pace two. Casablanca Smile has run second on the outside, chasing Tizaquina to the first turn run here at Colonial. So second will be Casablanca Smile, and Shared Account is in third, and Dinosaur racing fourth spot, followed by Kitty Cat Express third to last position, and Omega Cat tight quarters inside for Blind Date, only seven lengths from first to last. Tizaquina. Aquina settled into a very steady beat of this firm going in the all along. A length and a quarter in front from Casablanca Smile. Hard held second. Shared account is right up there in third. And Blind Date makes forward progress early in the race. She's all the way up to third now. A length and three quarters in the front. Dinosaur is out there three wide. Followed by Kitty Cat Express and Omega Cat. Still seven lengths. Covers the first runner to the last. 24 two quarter. 49 and three half mile for Tiz Aquina and her front running ways under E. T. Baird leading it by three quarters now a length. Casablanca Smile Blind Date is in third. Shared Account is a patient fourth. Kitty Cat Express is in fifth and Dinah Slew and trailing is Omega Cat. Three eighths of a mile left to go and Tiz Queen is still there half from Casablanca Smile in second. Shared Account is racing in the clear. Blind Date Dinah Slew is three deep to the top of the stretch. Omega Cat is wide and Kitty Cat Express and they turn in for home a quarter of a mile to run. Tiz Queen is Shared Account quick and the center of the course. Casablanca smile there. Gamely in between horses racing in the third spot. A furlong left to go and shared account in Edgar Prado. Casablanca smile right there in between horses. Tis Aquina back there to the inside and Dinah Slew tries to quicken up very late. Shared account. Shared account in a three-way go for second. Casablanca smile and Tis Aquina and Dinah Slew in the photo. Then a mega cat and blind date and kitty cat express. Shared Account gets the win. Good to see her back in the winner's circle. She won the Lake Placid up here at Saratoga last summer and had run some pretty nice races in the interim. She returned to the races off a winter freshening with a close-up fourth last time out to the very good rainbow view in the Gallerette at Pimlico. And here scores the victory over recent Bogay winner Dinah Slew. We had a dead heat in the show spot between Tiz Aquina and Casablanca Smile. The winner's shared account is a bay daughter of Pleasantly Perfect from Silk and Sapphire by Smart Strike. Bred in Kentucky by William A. Carl and owned by the Sagamore Farm, trained by Graham Motion and ridden to victory by Edgar Prado, shared account covers the nine furlongs and 149.16. Next up, three-year-olds on the turf in the half a million dollar Colonial Turf Cup. And they're off in the Colonial Turf Cup. 
Working for Hops out front. Here's Two Notch Road now up to the front and Two Notch Road going over to the inside, gliding over to take that lead by two lengths from Working for Hops in second. Kindergarten Kid is right up close. Patio Prado's inside there, racing fourth, mid flight. Dean's Kitten is next and Vamos Lever and Doubles Partner is last. Seven lengths from the first runner to the last into the first turn run, a 24 and one opening quarter for Two Notch Road is out there opening up the lead now to three. Working for Hops is second. Kinder Garden Kid is in third. Patio Prado inside in fourth there. Five from the front. Followed up by doubles partner Dean's Kitten and Vamos Sever is the last horse. Not much change in the order up the back straight run now. And so two notch road dictating terms out there by two lengths after a half and 48 two fifths of a second. It is two notch road and Sheldon Russell in control of the pace. Working for Hops is second. Kindergarten Kid is third. Four off the lead. Patio Prado still on the inside there in the fourth spot followed up by Dean's Kitten. After that is Doubles partner second last as they enter the far turn run and Vamos Severs on the inside. Around the turn, Two Notch Road, the one to catch with a two length lead with three furlongs to go, working for Hops Kindergarten Kid. Patio Prado is asked to sprint on home now on the inside from fourth and Patio Prado picks it up, angling off the inside. Here comes Patio Prado, powerfully on the outside. Patio Prado to join the leaders at the top of the lane. Two Notch Road, Patio Prado working for Hops in between horses. Doubles partners moved into fourth, a long left to go. Patio Prado, a neck in front from working for Hops and a battling two notch road. Fourth there is Doubles partner, but it's Patio Prado, powerful as can be under Kent Desormo, coming home to win the Colonial Turf Cup. Patio Prado scores by three, working for Hops second. Two notch road hangs in well third. Doubles partner, Dean's Kitten and Vamos Sever and Kindergarten Kid was last. Patio Prado back in the winner's circle as well. This is a horse that has been very good on pretty much every surface that he has tried, including a good third in the Kentucky Derby, sixth last time out in the Preakness. Here returns to what I suspect is his preferred surface to score the victory by three over Working for Hops, who was in off a nice performance last out at Arlington Park. Two Notch Road in off of two very sharp Mammoth Park allowance races. Completes the order of the top three. The winner, Patio Prado, is a gray or roan son of El Prado from Funhouse by Prized, bred in Kentucky by Winchell Thoroughbreds and owned by Donegal Racing, trained by Dale Romans, ridden to victory by Kent DeSormo. Patty O. Prado goes the mile and three sixteenths, a colonial and 154.20. We'll pause for one brief message now, and when we return, we have got some terrific sprint racing action from Friday, I'm sorry, from Saturday night at Charlestown. Please stay with us. Back to Horses and Courses. We'll continue now at Charlestown with four stakes from Saturday evening going back to the uh, first of the series. It is three year old Phillies in the Lady Charlestown stakes, four and a half furlong dash. Let's head to West Virginia for the Lady Charlestown. And there. 
there off in the $100,000 Lady Charlestown. Far outside and Trance breaks a early for the early lead. Here comes downtown Allen up to take the lead. Up the inside on the move is Starring Sky. And then to the outside is Kenny Lane. Between horses, we have High Five Gal driving the rail. Veronica's Lake up into contention. Two more back to Kin Solving. Then comes Southern Truth. On the far outside is Milk Kids. And at the back of that pack is Grammy. Opening quarter, 21-3. A quick pace. And downtown, Allen and Matt McGowan mean business tonight. They're on the lead, holding on by three. In second, Starring Sky. Veronica's Lake now coming with a rush on the far outside. I'll there five wide southern truth at the top of the stretch trying to make a lead move but it is downtown allen tricking looking to go on to victory here he's got it by five veronica's lake a clear cut second it's downtown allen winner of the lady charlestown up for second veronica's lake in third southern truth tight for fourth starring sky or kin solving unofficial winning time 51 and one fifth second downtown Allen, what a pretty well-managed filly i have to say this is a three-year-old filly who was six for 11 lifetime all local she's a charlestown based horse she clearly is the dominant sprinter in the uh, on the circuit here as she picks up yet another victory four and a quarter lengths the better of veronica's lake with southern truth in from aqueduct picking up the third spot Downtown Allen is a Bay three-year-old daughter of Windsor Castle from Like Downtown by Roy. Bred in West Virginia by John Allen Casey, owned by the breeder, trained by John Allen Casey as well, and ridden to victory as, as she has been in all of her races by Matthew McGowan. Downtown Allen covers the four and a half and 51.28. Back to the four and a half for a long distance for the Charlestown Invitational Dash for three-year-olds and up. They're off in the Charlestown Invitational Dash. Jiu Jitsu Jax comes out running on the far outside. On the inside, here comes Trust Your Bust up close today between horses. Immortal Eyes now up to press the pace. We drop back another two to Sir Silver Fox. Then comes C. Dubai on the far outside, Central City. Behind that one is Nine Way Hit. Two more back to Love Strong Heart. And Great Love is at the back. A quarter, 21 and two fifth seconds. On the inside, Immortal Eyes setting the pace. Right alongside there to put pressure on him is Jiu Jitsu Jax. Back racing in the third spot spot is trust or bust to the outside fourth central city's got about five to make up as jew jitsu jackson jd acosta takes a short lead immortal eyes coming right back on the inside these two stride for stride immortal eyes refusing to give up the lead gets the win by half a length over jew jitsu jacks back racing in third was trust or bust it's tight for fourth to round off the super between love strong heart and central city but for super effective purposes it will be the eight central city unofficial winning time 50 and three fifth seconds just over a half second shy of equaling the track record Immortal eyes. Quite frankly, I did not realize this guy was still in training. I remember him from his Naira days and uh, now back in, uh, in Charlestown. And he has had a fairly nice year this year thus far, coming out of a win on, in allowance company right here. He scores the stakes victory by a half a length, duking it out every step of the way and proving the best by a half over Jiu-Jitsu Jacks with four to one shot trust or bust finishing third. Central City was six for nine going in, was the favorite off of a nice win at Pimlico last time out, unfortunately. Maybe not uh, handling the sharp turns as well as some of the others down at uh, the Charlestown surface and settling for fourth in the field of nine. The winner immortalized is a Bay Gelding, a son of greatness from Private Eyes by Private Terms, bred in Florida by Adina Springs, owned by Robert Abbo Racing Stable Limited and trained by Damon Dil Dilo Dovitico. Ridden to victory by Eric Ramirez. Immortal Eyes covers the four and a half and 50.71. Next up, we'll stretch things out to the two turns, seven furlongs and the wild and wonderful stakes. And they're off in the wild and wonderful stakes. 
Stumbling there at the start was Kruger Park, but he's up and running after the lead. Kruger Park right to the lead with J.D. Acosta despite that start. On the inside, officer on the move now to the inside, looking to challenge. Far outside, Nays Tap is up into third. Splitting horses in fourth comes Harlan Street. Joined on the rail by Silver Edition. Three wide of that group will be my friend Nev. Now we drop back another two lengths on the inside. Terms of engagement. And then back between horses looking for room. Russell Road in no advantage. Another five lengths back to that 99 to one shot. Delaware Diamond. The quarter, 23 and two fifth seconds. They're bunched up on the lead. And Kruger Park, J.D. Acosta all out trying to take this one. Nays Park right there racing second. Now on the outside, Harlan Street begins to close in. So does Russell Road now. He's up into third and rocketing towards the leaders. Back between horses, Silver Edition about to be passed on the outside by my friend Nev. A 20 to 1 shot trying to be a part of it and on the outside here comes the king of Charlestown Russell Road up and after the leader down on the inside Nays Tap digging in and try to hold him off in third my friend Nev could be a major part of this then we drop back another three links on the inside to Kruger Park it's still Nays Tap trying to upset Russell Road Russell's Road coming on the far outside my friend Nev three of them across the track and a photo finish either my friend Nev or Nays Tap, Russell Road will settle for third tonight. Back in fourth, it's close between No Advantage and Harlan Street. Hold all tickets. The judges will determine the exact order of finish. The winning time, 125 and 1 fifth second. My friend Nev picks up the victory. A nice effort by this gelding, who has also had a pretty nice year, year this year with five for wins for five starts. Coming out of a Presque Isle performance, it was a sol solid race there. Obviously takes nicely to the two turns. It stretches out well to win by a neck over Nays Tap with Russell Road back in third. A, the odds-on favorite and a pretty uh, proven commodity. Interestingly enough, my friend Nev, who is five for five this year, still paid $43.40 in uh, what obviously was a fairly competitive event. My friend Nev, a dark bear brown gelded son of Maddie G from Her Majesty Rose by Magisterial. Bred in Kentucky by Lockley Farm and owned by Midwest Thoroughbreds. Trained by Jamie Ness and ridden to victory by Sylvester Carmouche. My friend Nev covers the 7 and 125.38. Next up, three-year-old sprinting, two turns, seven furlongs in the Red Legend. Trying to get the two settled down, and they're off in the Red Legend stakes. Center of the track, Comadero goes right out to set that early pace. Inside of him, Son of Bear is going to press that one early. Up into third along the rail is Working Capital, matching strides with Backtalk to the outside. Both of those two are on the move after the leader. Back in fifth is Ken's Cape, and down along the inside, My Little Secret. And last one to the turn will be Northern Giant. Out to set the pace, Comadero and Robbie Alvarado went the quarter in 22 and two fifths seconds. A comfortable pace for this bunch. Now on the outside, Working Capital looks to move up in second, but still four already from the front. Third along the rail is Son of a Bear. Another three lengths back to Back Talk. Fourth up into fifth is Ken's Cape. Another three and a half back to My Little Secret. And trailing still is Northern Giant. They head to the inn at Charlestown. Turn the half 46 and one. And Commodaro has showed up today and opens up by five around the turn. Here comes Back Talk. Trying to put a late bid in. Right behind that one comes Ken's Cape now under a move. Dropping back in fourth is Son of a Bear. Another three lengths back to My Little Secret. Secret. But coming off the turn, Commodaro in control, opens up by seven. This could be the best three-year-old in the country. He leads by nine in the $400,000 Red Legend Stakes. He will win the richest three-year-old sprint in the country. Handwritten home, my little secret up for second with Backtalk finishing third. In fourth came North Northern Giant from last. Unofficial winning time, 125 and two. Comadero, I think it's fair to say this guy's the real deal. He is an awfully nice sprinter coming in out of a win in the Chick Lang at Pimlico on the uh, Preakness card. He is eight for nine lifetime. 
and eight for eight when allowed to sprint. He got to the front, never looked back, winning by two and a quarter lengths. Throttled down under Robbie Alvarado over my little secret in from Delaware Park with Backtalk, whose most recent performance was the Kentucky Derby. Not often they go from the Kentucky Derby to a race like the Red Legend at Charlestown, but with $400,000 on offer, it was certainly worth the trip as the third place finisher earned over $39,000. The winner, however, Comadero, looks to be really an interesting horse. I do hope that they manage to get this horse into uh, back into the big leagues. He did run at Pimlico last time out because he really does look like a sharp three-year-old sprinter. Comadero is a three-year-old bay son of posse from Pawnee Paddy by Sir Richard Lewis. Bred in Arkansas by McDowell Farm, owned by Peter Redekop Limited and trained by Michael Stidham. Written victory by Robbie Alvarado, Calmadero covers the 7 and 125.57. We'll head back to midweek at Indiana Downs on Wednesday night. They were off the turf in the Golden Bear for older horses. We back the board and we'll be ready to go here with the Golden Bear Stakes. Now they're set and they're off. Along the inside and Custic for the lead. Up on the outside, march to victory with Pop Tart in between horses in third. Then up on the outside, Sammy Davis Jr. Followed out there by Timeless Fashion. The only trailer is I Am Boomer in this tightly packed group. Opening quarter in 25 seconds. Off to turn and race to the back stretch. And then Caustic leads it by a length and a half. The outside, march to victory, and second by a head. I am Boomer, the inside third. Well, that's timeless fashion. Caught three wide in fourth with a pop-tart and trailing. Sammy Davis, Jr. Still only four lengths separate the field. The half as they pick it up, 48 and three. On the part turn they go. And the Caustic with uh, Justin Shepard uh, leading it here by a length and a half. March to victory on the outside a second. Trying to launch a bid is Timeless Fashion on the outside third. And at the rail, Hot Dart, three quarters. One, 12 and three, three sixteenths to go. They're on their way home with the Golden Bear Stakes. And it's in Caustic and Justin Shepard. Who leads it here by a length and a half? Trying to drive through on the inside is I Am Boomer. But in deep stretch, it's in Caustic. In front wins it by two. I Am Boomer second, March to victory third. And Caustic gets the win. This is an old-timer that I followed for a long time. He's 11 for 45 lifetime. He was coming in out of a win in Stakes Company last time out. Uh, he's 4 for 7 this year at the age of 6. Seems to be as good as ever. He gets to the front, lopes along, and wins by a length and three quarters as the odds on choice over I.M. Boomer with Churchill Shipper March to Victory, rounding out the top three. The winner in Caustic, a six-year-old bay son of Broad Brush from Illyria by Stop the Music, was bred in Maryland by Fitzhugh and is owned by Premier Stable Unlimited and Tag Stable. Trained by Mark Schumann, ridden to victory by Justin Shepard, and Caustic covers the mile in off-the-turf conditions at Indiana Downs in 140.34. We'll pause for another brief message, and when we return, we'll be heading north of the border to Woodbine. We'll also be heading west to California for racing from Hollywood and back home at Belmont as well. Please stay with us.
Welcome back to Horses and Courses. We'll continue now at Woodbine, starting out on Saturday. Two-year-olds in action in the Victoria Stakes. They're at the post. Uh, they're off in the Victoria Stakes. Hanks Hill and now Madman Diaries rushes to the front. And it's Madman Diaries. Brock and Rock ask for speed early. Back in the third is Affluence. Then Hanks Hill, Flagpole and Code, a dancer. And on the outside, it's Brock and Rock who outsprinted Madman Diaries for that early lead. Brock and Rock has crossed over to the rail. Madman Diaries comes on the inside now. Affluence is right there in third. A stunning opening quarter of 21 and 2. And Madman Diaries asks for more run by Jeffrey Sanchez at the rail and comes on and overhauls Brock and Rock as they turn for home. And it's Madman Diaries on the inside. Brock and Rock is a game second. Then Affluence. Hanks Hill is on the far outside. Madman Diaries throwing in another huge effort. A half in 44 and 4. And they're coming down to the wire. Madman Diaries pummels this field to win the Victoria. Brock and Rock was second. And Affluence third. The running time 57 and 1. Madman Diaries in out of a Woodbine Maiden in which he won by nine this time. Wins by nine and a quarter as the favorite from just off the pace. Pace setter Brock and Rock who wasn't out in front all that long. Completes the order of the exacta as Delaware shipper Affluence completes the top three. The winner, Madman Diaries, began his career with a second place finish in his Keeneland debut behind Firepole. He was able to turn the tables rather handily on that rival. That came, of course, prior to his uh, very impressive maiden when moved up to Woodbine, where he's also moved on to, uh, back onto the synthetic surface. So he has run his entire race on the synthetic, or career on the synthetic, all of them very nice performances. Madman Diaries is a dark bear brown gelded son of Bring the Heat from Harper and Abbey by Outflanker. Bred in Florida by Wesley Ward and owned by the breeder, trained by Wesley Ward, ridden to victory by Jeffrey Sanchez, Madman Diaries covers the 5 and 57.26. Next up, three-year-olds and up fillies and mares in action in Sunday afternoons, Hillendale at Woodbine. They're at the post. They're off in the Hillendale Stakes. Milwaukee appeal, and from the outside, you will love me. And those two split by La Rocca. Tasty Temptation is gathered back in a fourth position. And Flashy got even zeroly trailer. And it's La Rocca as they run into the clubhouse turn a tad wide now. Uh, McElhaney is angling her a little closer to the fence. Milwaukee appeal is down to the inside. Second, just three quarters of a length behind. You will love me is in third. Tasty Temptation's out of trouble on the outside. Fourth. And two and a half lengths off the lead. And Flashy got even trails. 24 and one-fifth of a second for the opening quarter mile. And there are five furlongs out in the Hillendale. And McElhaney is coddling the speed of LaRocca. They lead it a length and a half. You will love me is on the outside second. Milwaukee appeal saved ground through that uh, initial turn. Tasty Temptations out there three wide. Travels well and just two lengths off the lead. Then Flashy got even. La Rocca is still there. 48 and 1 for that opening half. And less than three furlongs to go. La Rocca, a length and a half. Tasty Temptation poised to do some damage. Elliot is asking Milwaukee appeal down to the inside. Flashy got evens put to pressure. Then you will love me. La Rocca at the top of the stretch. And it's La Rocca. And McElhaney will pull out all the stops to try to get her home. On the outside is Tasty Temptation. Then Milwaukee appeal. La Rocca trying to hold on for one more 16th. Tasty Temptation has put to an all-out drive and has caught La Rocca. And it's Tasty Temptation and Patrick Husbands to win the Hillendale. Milwaukee appeal got second on the money. La Rocca third and You Will Love Me was fourth. Temptation gets the victory. Uh, 
odds on favorite in here, her fourth win in a row. She has moved through Allowance Company very nicely and right into stakes. And here pulls off the win over Milwaukee Appeal, who is in from Belmont. This was a Woodbine based filly who had done very well last year in major stakes company. La Rocca completes the order of the top three after showing good early speed. Tasty Temptation is a gray filly, a daughter of Medallia Doro from Parisia by Tethra. Bred in Ontario by Josham Farms and owned by Woodford, Woodford Racing Limited, trained by Mark Cassie and ridden to victory by Pat Husbands. Tasty Temptation covers the mile and a 16th and 143.93. Three-year-olds in action out in Southern California this weekend, beginning on Saturday. Three-year-olds on the main track in the Affirmed. They're off. Golden it is and a hard scent skip shot and there goes skip shot through to take over the lead. Golden it is away in second, Ranger Hartley three deep in third and skip shot did not corner very well and that was no good for Golden it is or Ranger Hartley. Skip shot an absolute handful for Smoke and Joe. Ranger Hartley going to get away from him with Bayerano and now he leads. Skip shot is second, Golden it is now settles in third with Gallant Jen at the rail in fourth. Summer movies the gray breaking fifth. Then comes Mind Blower and Distorted Dave and Alfie bet is at the back of the pack as Ranger Hartley takes charge. It is Ranger Hartley up the back stretch and he's built up a solid lead here. Ranger Hartley is three and a half or four in front of Skip Shot in second. Golden it is and now Gallant Jen are together third and fourth and they're about five lengths behind. Mind Blower is at the rail with seven lengths to make up. Summer movie just outside of him. Distorted Dave is second to last and nine lengths behind and Alfie's bet would have to make up 11 lengths in the final half mile to win the 32nd and affirmed handicap. Ranger Hartley committed to sprint for the last three furlongs. He leads skip shot by a length and three quarters. Golden it is and Gallant Jen are still together. They're third and fourth and Golden it is is within two and a half lengths of the lead. The whip is out on summer movie. Alfie's bet draws within six of the front then mind blower and distorted Dave. They run to the top of the stretch and here comes skip shot to claim the lead. Skip shot is the new leader. Golden it is after him in second. Alfie's bet in the center. Gallant Jen Skip Shot going to try to hold off Golden It Is. Skip Shot leads. Golden It Is trying to gun him down on the money. Here's Golden It Is. Skip Shot. Golden It Is. Alfie's bet late. Golden It Is wins. Golden It Is wins the 32nd affirmed over a very game and well ridden Skip Shot. Alfie's bet was third, close for a fourth. Ranger Hartley in summer movie. Golden it is, looking not unlike his sire, like a sharp, later developing three-year-old. He is now three for four um, and won an allowance race last time out. Very sharp fashion back at the end of April by 11 lengths. Here he wins by a half length as he moves into graded stakes company over skip shot with Alfie's bet back in the third spot. Another one you might want to keep your eye on as a late developer, a son of Tis Now from Golden Tea by Dixieland Band was bred in Kentucky by William A. Carl, owned by the JMS Stable, trained by Ron Ellis, and ridden to victory by Tyler Bays. Golden it is covers the mile in the 16th and 142.84. Next up, Sunday's stakes feature three year olds on the turf in the Will Rogers. They're off. You can do it in Camp Victory show speed. Who's up is taken back off those two. Hudson Landing, Macias on the move in the center. Dream, Nettie, and Leroy's Dynamo, and the early trailer is Bogey. Three across the track early, and they go fast. Camp Victory between horses. Macias three deep, and you can do it at the rail, and the three of them are right together. Those three are three and a half clear of who's up, who settles into a perfect striking position. Dream Nettie and Hudson Landing are six off the lead. Leroy's Dynamo has 11 to make up. And if Bogey wins the 69th Will Rogers Stakes, he'll make up 13 lengths. Macias aggressively takes charge. It is Macias to sprint away now up the back stretch, and he flies away to a three and a half length lead over Camp Victory in second. You Can Do It is backed off now. He's third and about five from the front. Who's up traveling beautifully just outside of him? Here's who's up into third and five from the front. Two lengths to Dream Nettie and Hudson Landing. They've got seven to come. Bogey could need racing room. He's inside of Leroy's Dynamo and Macias is three furlongs from the wire. 
and he's got a two length lead over Camp Victory. Who's up is three deep. He's only two and three quarters from the lead. Then comes You Can Do It. Bogey, nowhere to go yet. Leroy's Dynamo is running five wide. Hudson Landing just inside of him. Dream Netty is next, and they run to the top of the stretch. It is Macias in front. Who's up comes to take him on. Leroy's Dynamo is running a big one. In the center, Bogey now unwinds, but he's still three lengths behind Macias, who reaches for the wire. Leroy's Dynamo trying to get him. Bogey in the center now levels out, and here he comes. Leroy's Dynamo, Bogey to the outside. Leroy's Dynamo, Bogey, Leroy's Dynamo! The 69th Will Rogers Stakes went to Leroy's Dynamo and Joel Rosario to beat Bogey by a head. Macias finished third. Leroy's Dynamo, a close third in the Alcatraz at Golden Gate last time out behind Hudson uh, Hudson Landing and Dream Netty turns the tables on those two rather handily here at 13 and a half to one. He blows by them late in the stretch. He didn't get uh, the pace he needed in the Alcatraz, but here he did with a little bit of a sharper pace up front on that very firm turf course. He flies late to win by a neck over Bogey with Messias, the early pace setter, settling for third. Leroy's Dynamo is a dark bear brown gelded son of Lua des Animo from Dyna Peak by Dyna Former. Bred in Kentucky by LNA Racing Incorporated, known by the breeder, trained by Mark Glatt, ridden to victory by Joel Rosario. Leroy's Dynamo covers the mile in a 16th on the Hollywood turf in 140.43. We'll return to New York now for a pair of stakes races starting on the turf on Saturday afternoon. Phillies and mares at a mile and a quarter in the New York Handicap. And they're off. Oh, Gossip Girl went to her head, leaving the starting gate and through jockey Ramon Dominguez. Gossip Girl unseated the rider right at the start. And so now the four of them will continue on here in the New York Stakes, and Daveron's going to be the leader. Ave running along in second, followed by Changing Skies third, and then farther back in the field, Lady Shakespeare, and the galloping along riderless is Gossip Girl. So around the clubhouse turn, Daveron controlling the tempo here. 24 and 1 was the opening quarter mile. Reasonable enough. Ave sitting back, running along in second. Changing skies, comfortable third. And then Lady Shakespeare fourth. So their positions are unchanged through the opening half mile here as Daveron continues to lead the way. And Ave now edging up a bit closer to her, not letting Daveron get too far away. The half mile was 48 and 4 fifth seconds. Four lengths behind Daveron and Ave lies Changing Skies. And Changing Skies under a long hold there by Channing Hill, just running in a comfort zone. It's another two and a half lengths back. And uh, Johnny Velasquez getting a general reminder into Lady Shakespeare, who trails the field. She's seven lengths off a three-quarter mark of 11 and 4. Now the field rounding the far turn. Daveron now starting to pick that tempo up. Daveron is the leader by a length as Ave tries to close in as they approach the top of the stretch. And now Changing Skies has been given her cue. She's still about four behind. And Lady Shakespeare, a lot to do in the final two furlongs here. They're at the top of the stretch. Daveron is bracing for Ave and Changing Skies and Lady Shakespeare on the scene late. Anybody could win it from here. Daveron struggling now. Here's Ave and here's Lady Shakespeare who looked dead out of it at the top of the stretch. And they're coming down to the finish. And Lady Shakespeare turned it on in the stretch here at Belmont Park and wins the New York by two and a half lengths. Changing Skies was second then Ave. Lady Shakespeare picking up the victory, and, and she is a horse that has kind of knocked on the door. She's had a tremendous career, although when stepping up into the highest quality racing, she has been just not quite up to it. But maybe this is going to be her year at the age of four. She is seven for 12 lifetime, and she comes back off of a win at Keeneland in the Bewitch last time out to rally to finish two and three quarters in front of Changing Skies with Ave back in third. And of course, 
as you saw the race marred by a stumble, a bad stumble by Gossip Girl, who dropped Ramon Dominguez on the track. And of course, she was the second favorite in the race behind Lady Shakespeare. So that obviously changed things a little bit, as she certainly would have been a filly that uh, pretty much everyone would have had their eye on in terms of being a strong contender for the victory. This would have been, of course, was Lady Gossip Girl, or was Gossip Girl's rather, return to the races. So, you know, we'll have to see what they, uh, what they decide to do with her. This was to be her four-year-old debut. Lady Shakespeare, however, has uh, got her feet under her fairly quickly during the course of this season and has now won two stakes. She is a chestnut four-year-old daughter of theatrical from Lady Cheryl by That's a Nice, bred in Kentucky by Charles Fipke and owned by the breeder, trained by Roger Atfield, a full sister to a grade one stakes winner Shakespeare, covers the mile and a quarter under John Velasquez in two minutes, point three four. Next up, three-year-old New York Reds going seven furlongs in the Big Apple Triples opener, the Mike Lee at Belmont. They're in the gate. And they're off. I.E. Boye off to a stutter step start at the back of the pack is I.B. Boye. And it's General Maximus who goes on the lead. General Maximus on top early on. Friend or foe now gets back in second. On the inside, Make No comes away third. Rainix Jet is fourth. And four lengths back to I.B. Boye, who's now about nine, ten lengths from the leader, General Maximus. General Maximus drills a 22 and four opening quarter mile. Friend or foe chasing second by three. Rainix Jet and Make No together, third and fourth. And a break of another three. And Johnny Velasquez now asking I.B. Boye for a run, but I.B. Boye still about eight from the lead. Around the far turn, General Maximus continues to roll along. Friend or foe now takes a crack at him as they move toward the top of the stretch. The half was 47 seconds flat. Rainix Jet runs in third. I.E. Boy is now on far outside, getting within five of the lead. Make note down on the rail. The field turns for home. General Maximus still holding on to the lead. Friend or foe is full out, and those two come to the eighth pole together. Friend or foe now has the lead. It is friend or foe in front. General Maximus second on the inside. Rainix Jet and I.B. Boy. Friend or foe, first by two. General Maximus was second. I.E. Boy got third. Friend or foe picks up the victory. This guy's now three for three. He broke his maiden at Gulfstream back in March over some pretty nice horses. Came back in a state bred allowance race in mid-May at Belmont Park where he picked up yet another victory, now moves into Stakes Company and pulls off the mild upset. He was the third choice in the betting at a tick or two over five to two over General Maximus, who was also in off a couple of nice races. I.B. Boye, who had been facing pretty good graded Stakes Company, settles for third off of a sharp win last time out. And that win came in the Spendabuck down in uh, New Jersey over some pretty nice horses there at Monmouth Park. The winner, friend or foe, is a chestnut three-year-old son of Friends Lake. From Unbridled Star by Unbridled was bred in New York by Chester and Mary Broman and is owned by the breeders, trained by John Kimmel and ridden to victory by Rajiv Marath. I would imagine that this guy will continue to pursue the Big Apple Triple, although he certainly does look like a horse that may have the kind of quality that's going to take him into graded stakes. He's run very fast in all three of his career starts, all three of them sprints. But if you take a look at that pedigree, it certainly looks like a colt that would want to stretch out. Friends Lake, a grade one winner at nine furlongs and a son of AP Indy. Of course, Unbridled Star, a daughter of Derby and Breeders' Cup Classic winner, Unbridled. So a lot of pedigree to stretch out if they want to move this guy into graded stakes. And of course, you've got the series, the uh, Big Apple Triple, which continues with the New York Derby at Finger Lakes at two turns and then finishes in Saratoga with the Albany Handicap at nine furlongs. So you've got a couple of options with a horse like Friend or Foe, who certainly looks like a classy one as he scores the seven furlongs in 121.68. That'll wrap up a busy edition of Horses and Courses. Thank you for joining us. We hope you'll be able to join us again next week as we take a look at stakes racing action from around the country. Until then, I'm Jean Wood. Have a great week at the races.